there are certain fundamental truths that we must come to terms with in order to understand what the meaning of life actually is. And one of those things is that although we are one individual being, we are also comprised of a thousand billion individual cells. So that is an aspect of what we truly are. And if we understand where these individual cells came from, it was from the embryo, it was from the con conception, it was a con combining of the potentials of the mother and the father and the lineages that extended through their mothers and fathers on and on through all ancient time and all ancient history. These things are fundamental truths. But look carefully at where the flow of these genetics that allow all of this to occur. What, actually, what does it do as it moves through time? And we find that if we look at the way that, that the genetics inside ourselves that comprise, that allowed all the, the thousand billion cells to emerge, where it came from, if we go back 250 years, we have a thousand different ancestors at that time, through 10 generations. If we go back 20 generations, we have this number multiplied by itself again. And so we have a million different ways we're related to those people a mere 500 years ago. And if we go back a thousand years, then we have, then have a number, a thousand billion different ways that we are related to all of those people who lived a thousand years ago which is the equivalent to the number of cells in our body, coincidentally. This is a, another aspect of our identity. We are an identity that is derived from these ancient populations. And we are related in enormous ways throughout this all this span of time. So what we are as individuals comprised of genetic processes. This thing, each of the genes is not just within each of us. Our identity is comprised of the gene, but it's, uh, that gene is spread throughout the community unless, in the world, unless we are um, uh, carrying a mutation of some sort. So if we understand ourselves as this genetic flow that is coming through time, through these massive numbers, we must also recognize that there is another identity that is somehow comprised in what we are as a, a, a gene pool. And that is that this gene pool will have a future. And so there will be generations in the distant future who will look back through their ancestry and be connected ultimately through their ancestry. They created in our image in a certain kind of way as a, this gene pool creating that future gene pool. But if for there to be a future for the planet, we cannot let the numbers of six and a half billion now people, these numbers can't continue to grow. We are reaching some very severe limits on the, on the world. Now, if we as a species were able to recognize what we are as this enormous genetic flow that's moving through time and the relatedness within all of us, then we could devise some kind of grand plan of calling the ultimate truth. But in order to and then creating a, um, some kind of paradise rather than just letting the whole thing just continue to cascade into ultimates of environmental catastrophe. There are strategies that could be employed if we had some kind of true way of recognizing what we were. But to get through all of this recognition you need to understand the way that we perceive numbers. The numbers billion, the numbers billion billion, these numbers are important in describing what we are, not just as um, an individual within our own species, but also what we are on this planet, in the solar system, in this galaxy, in this universe. Somehow I, I, our identity began when the universe began because that's the process that continued on, continued on until it describes every atom in our being. Every atom had its own connection, its own creation to that whole, whole process that continued throughout time. But the biggest question we always ask ourselves and the things we end up sort of coming up against as impenetrable is although we have, can have a genetic 
a description for all of reality in terms of genetics and in terms of the creations that come from that complex of ge genetics, the individuals, the, the societies, the populations, all of these things can be understood about the way the whole process continued on through time and, and ended up being in this particular situation in this particular time and allowing us to then define it. But beyond all of that, there was this ultimate nagging sort of question that people had. So the question is, why is it my consciousness that's existing within this genetic form, within this population, within this biosphere, within this universe? Why am I comprised of these cells and these atoms and these genes? And why is it all just coincidentally ended up being exactly me here now doing this? Like, what is that question that I'm, I can't find an answer to? And now I can tell you that answer. You are the ultimate addition of all of these thousand billion cells. But each of those cells has its own foundation. And the foundation that it's built upon has not known death. It has continued on in a continuous flow throughout all time. And so when conception occurred, there was the joining of the genetic lineages. But at that same time, there was the cytoplasm, there was that egg that was there. That contained all of the cellular machinery that allowed the fetus to, to grow. It needed the, the first cell. Now that first cell, through cell division, there's no, there's no death. Cells just keep on dividing throughout all time. But it only goes through the line of mothers, 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 that the lineage there that has never known death. Now that lineage of always being alive is the same thing that is always alive in each of our thousand billion cells. Now that is the foundation of our sudden wonderment, our one, one wondering what, the, what it is that we are, how should we define ourselves, that is what it has come from. It has come from something that has never died, but this thing has then been taken over by this genetic complexity, this process of sorting through all the possibilities and circumstances and some people get through and then they meet and they have children, they fall in love and they have the adventures and they build the world and they change the, whatever it is they can do. Um, and so with the, the end of all of this process, but it's built on upon a certain eternal foundation. Now if we understand that, then we solve a lot of our problems about religion. We solve our a lot of our social problems, we define ourselves as these creatures born in this particular image of this flow, this incredible process, this truth revealed about what it is that makes us what we are. And then we look to the future and say, well, what are we supposed to do then? How do we get eternal life? Ah, eternal life must be when we create some kind of future that exists on for eternity, so it seems. But we have to open up this possibility that the world will continue on and be a paradise for all time. But to do that, we have to turn this world into something that actually works. And the only way we can do that is by understanding what it is that we are as being human. And to understand that, we have to actually practice being human. We have to install in our, in our lifestyles and in our, in our cultural processes the the way of being human, of laughing together as large crowds of people, of singing together as large crowds of people, of being involved in dance together as large crowds of people, but not just a particular clique, but just getting people together to actually have some kind of sense of this is what I am and this is who we are and this is what we do as a, as a cultural expression. People should be able to develop their voices so they become the master of all sound. And we should be able to apply ourselves to walking long distances without the need of, of cars or even sometimes the need of shoes. To start installing in our lives the things that have always existed for all people throughout all time because that is the image in which we are created from that ancient time. The genetics that they had that added together to make their world and the process of all time from there successful ended up being what it is that we are expecting when we are suddenly emerging into our own sort of individual reality. So us, for us to have eternal life, we have to create that eternity that continues forevermore. And that is the truth. And that's just the way life goes through time. And I wish people had thought about it sooner. Thank you very much.